Father, we come before you one more time. Yes. Thanking for the many blessings that you have bestowed upon us this morning. Yes. You woke us up this morning. Yes. You woke us up and we were able to get up and move around and go about our normal duties. And for that, oh Lord, we are so graciously thankful. All along the way, you've been good to us. You kept us. You watched over us. And that for that again, we are so graciously thankful. Be with us today. Go with us. Stand by us. In these words we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Joshua, Joshua, the 24th chapter, and we, we move right into this word this morning. Joshua, the 24th chapter, beginning at the 14th verse, and when you found this passage of scripture, please signify by saying amen. That's not a whole bunch of amens. Amen. I think some of them just saying amen, so I'll get going. Amen. 
Yeah, so let's get going. Come on, from the 14th verse, it reads as follows. Now fear the Lord and serve him with all faithfulness. Throw away the gods your ancestors worshipped beyond the Euphrates River and in Egypt and serve the Lord. But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods of your ancestors serve beyond the Euphrates or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are now living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered, far be it for us to forsake the Lord to serve other gods. It was the Lord our God himself who brought us and our parents up out of Egypt from the land of slavery and performed those great signs before our eyes. He protected us on our entire journey and among all the nations through which he traveled. And the Lord drove out before us all the nations, including the Amorites who lived in the land. We too will serve the Lord because he is our God. And Joshua, y'all got to get this piece right here. Watch what Joshua says to him. After they say that. Because see Joshua knows these people. Mom. Joshua said to the people. You are not able. To serve the Lord. He is a holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your rebellion. Your sins. If you forsake the Lord. And serve foreign gods. He will turn and bring disaster on you. And make an end of you. After he has been good to you so the people now are trembling but the people said to Joshua no no Joshua we will serve the Lord then Joshua said okay all right then you are going to be witnesses against yourselves that you have chosen the Lord. In other words, Joshua said, I'm not running after you anymore. I'm not clearing the way for you anymore. I'm not fixing up your mess anymore. If you say you're going to serve the Lord, you're going to be witnesses to yourself. Yes, yes, we are witnesses, they replied. You know how y'all do. When it looked bad, everything could get good. Say amen, somebody. Now then, Joshua, throw away the foreign gods that are among you and yield your hearts to the Lord, the God of Israel. And the people said to Joshua, we will serve the Lord our God and obey him. On that day, on that day, Joshua made a covenant for the people. And there at Shechem, he reaffirmed. He reaffirmed for them decrees and laws. If I had to hashtag this today, Brother Rob, I would use for my subject, Election Day. Election Day. Mm. Church family, today is the last day of our As the Bible Turns series. Oh man, we've been going through this thing and the next Sunday we... We will have our harvest festival, and I'm not going to require Minister Nora Randolph to, to work with the liturgical series. And, and the final two Sundays of the month push us into Ezekiel and not anymore into this story. So today is the last day of As the Bible Turns. We've been studying about the children of Israel coming out of captivity. We've been, we've been studying as, as Moses led them out of Egypt, come on, into the desert. Watch them get fed by, by God in miraculous ways. Meat on the ground, bread on the ground. God just did his thing. We, we saw the Red Sea open up. Come on, somebody. We watched Moses plead to them 
to only worship God. And we saw him have to do that many times on this trip. We watched them disobey God to the point where God says, I'm going to kill all of Israel. Again, we watch Moses beg to God on behalf of the children of Israel. We're talking about the children of Israel. Don't they have something going on over there right now? I'm just saying. I just want to point that out to you, somebody. Mm, I'm just saying now. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. When I preached last, we saw Moses see the promised land. Then he was buried by God and declared by God to be the greatest prophet to ever live. Last week, while I was gone, Greg, Greg introduced you to the new leader of the children of Israel, Joshua, Joshua. His message last week was standing on the brink. Anybody ever been standing on the brink? Yeah, some of y'all standing on the brink right now. Yeah, you might as well say amen. Mm, the, 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 that, that's where they were at, on the brink. They could see their blessing. <laughs> but they couldn't get to it. Mm, Lord, have mercy. Yeah, 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 yeah. A river, a river named Jordan stood between them and the land of milk and honey. Yeah. As the bearers of the covenant touched the river, the water stood up. The people, the people, just like the Red Sea, walked through on dry land. Come on, y'all. Now, as we move through the book of Joshua, now we see the next generation was ready to see what was promised to their ancestors. That's key, y'all. That's key. A lot of people don't realize that this journey was about 50 years long to where we're at right now. Come on, y'all. When we started this, when we started this, it was 50 years ago. Mm, come on, y'all. That's when Miss Stevenson was about 30. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Say amen. Oh, y'all better get this point Ray about to give to y'all. You better get this point. See, everybody that started the race, none of them are seeing the promised land. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They got out of captivity. Raised hell all the way through the desert. Come on, y'all. Got blessed every time they needed to get blessed. But yet, none of them are seeing the promised land. So the Bible, the Bible tells us, the Bible tells us around that 19th chapter, now the new generation's on the scene, Terry. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's the Michelles, that's the, that's the Marys, that's the Marthas. Come on, that's the Lucilles in the church. Come on, that's the Anthonys in the church. Come on, somebody. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's time for the new generation to go. So as the story moves through the book of Joshua, they, they, they took down Jericho. Come on, y'all. Joshua defeated many little nations and took their land. In one spot, in one spot in, in, in the book of Joshua, Lord have mercy, five kings ran because they heard Joshua was coming. They hid in the cave. Joshua said, I don't have time to fool with them right now. Put a rock in front of the door so they can't leave till I come back. Joshua went and took somebody else's land and said, okay, now let me go back and get them five kings. He took the five kings and said, I need y'all to put your foot on their heads. And he cut all their heads off. Y'all better hear it. Doesn't that sound sort of like the Hamas? Oh, y'all don't hear Reb this morning. Of course, during this time, the children of Israel, what were they doing? <laughs> they was partying, losing sight of God again. Amen. Amen. Joshua now has to go back and said, Lord, don't, don't kill them right now. Forgive them one more time. The Lord gets upset. Lord, have mercy. Joshua beget, be, begins to beg for him. 
Joshua, 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 Lord have mercy, begins to keep taking land, taking people's land, taking people's land. This is, this is Israel, y'all, I'm talking about. Y'all not hearing me this morning. Joshua went through and just took people's stuff. But y'all don't, let me break this down. Let me break this down. Estelle, I'm just going to come to your house and take it. And we wonder why there's problems in Israel. Woo! Joshua separated the land, gave it to the 12 tribes, charged the people with direction for living. He's now renewing the covenant once again with the children of Israel and God. And the key verse today in the text says, choose this day whom you will serve. So from that, from that, from that key verse, that key verse, I want to just move on your mind about election day. When you think of election day, our minds quickly go to government elections, you know, president, vice president, say amen. Yeah, yeah, our mind goes, you know, to, to this and that. We really need to be dealing with them senators and them representatives that's pushing the law. We, 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 we go vote for the, for the people that really don't deal with us, and we miss the vote on the people that really do change our lives. Kelly, that's my NAACP minute this morning. Say amen. Yeah, we, we think of city and county officials. We, we think of who's going to be bossless of the frat the next year. Come on, somebody. Who's going to be the new potentate? We think of all those types of elections. But today, I want to talk to you about your personal election. Your personal election. Get this. Election day for an individual is the most important day of his life. We call it salvation. Oh, come on, somebody. It's the day you decide where you want your eternal home to be. Oh, amen. Oh, yeah. Now, now we're thinking outside the box now. Come on. There's a spiritual process or, or doctrinal thought about this of our personal election has confused a lot of people. And let, let me tell you why. It's, it, it, they, they usually break it down in like three different trains of thought. The, the first train of thought, some say, if God has chosen me for salvation, I will be saved. If he hasn't, there's nothing I can do about it. That's one thought. And, and you jump on these thoughts wherever you fit in. <laughs> the second thought, G-Man, is this one. Some, some think that, that every person must save themselves by their manner of life and that God has little to do with it. Woo -wee. That's thought number two. Thought number three, the final group, group says, well, everybody's going to be saved. Hmm. Well, Rev says that Scripture says, come on, y'all, that God offers a salvation. Oh, oh, y'all, y'all missed that. God offers you salvation. You don't have to take it. That, 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 that's, that's, that's the word. That's the word. John, John says in chapter 3, verses 3 through 6, that, that everyone must be born again. And unless you're born again and you come through the Father, you, you're not going to get to God. The Bible, the Bible tells us, well, hey, hold up. First of all, you got to confess your sins out of your mouth. Amen. Believe in your heart. Hey, hey, come, you, you got to be baptized. That's the word. That's the word. Well, Reb, you just said a whole bunch. 
explain that. I thought I did, but let me explain it again. <laughs> Kelly, that was an old preacher. You know old preachers have a way of breaking stuff down. Old preacher said it like this. He says, well, what you have to realize is God has given you a vote. The world has given you a vote. Or, or let's call the world, uh, 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 your friends have given you a vote. Come on, y'all. The Shriners have given you a vote. I'm preaching, y'all. Omega Sci-Fi has given you a vote. Come on. Delta Sigma Theta has given you a vote. Come on. Your class has given you a vote. Now you got God's vote and this vote. Your vote determines the election. The question is, what do you want to do? <laughs> what do you want? I know some folks like to say, well, can I just straddle the fence, Rev? Thank you for that answer. Mmm, mmm, you got to get that thing right there. Your, your personal election day is the day you choose to enter or not enter the spiritual circle of God. To accept or to reject Jesus Christ as your Savior. It's your choice. We serve a God of choice. So do what you want to do. I keep telling you it's, it's the, the, the most important day of your life. Check this out. For the rich young ruler in the book of Matthew, election day was tragic. Scripture says this young man rushed to Jesus with the urgent question, good master, good master, what shall I do to be saved? <laughs> Jesus already knew what his heart was like. Jesus, Jesus looked at him and said, well, I'll tell you what you do. Come here, come here, come here, come here, come here, young man. Take all that you have. Go sell it and give it to the poor. What we find then in Scripture is one of the saddest moments that we'll read about. Because the young man didn't want to give up his riches. So he walked away without being saved. His election day was tragic. Hmm. The next person I want to tell you about, his name's Zacchaeus. <laughs> Zacchaeus, Greg, you know, he, he, he was this crooked tax collector. <laughs> yeah, he, he was one of them tax collectors that, that met y'all in the parking lot and got your money before you came in church. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus climbed a tree so that he might just see Jesus pass by. Mm, Jesus saw him up in the tree and said, come on down here. We're going to eat at your house today. Mm. Then Jesus says, this, this day, this day, this day, because you have accepted me coming into your house. See, sometimes you know how folks, if you say, hey, I'm about to stop by. Hey, ho, 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 ho. Y'all know what I'm talking about. I need to go in the house to see what's going on up in there for her. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. I need to see what I left on the table before you come up in the house. Y'all, quit playing. Y'all know what I'm talking about. But Zacchaeus said, well, come on over, Lord. Come on over. The Lord said, well, I tell you what. Today, this house is going to be blessed. So, 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 on his election day, everything went well. Mmm, y'all don't get that right there. The, these two New Testament characters are, are symbols of us, us today. Those who receive Jesus and those who want to reject him. Come on, y'all. And you can't, you can't sit back and say, oh, I didn't reject him. Well, yeah, 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 you did. You put everything else in front of him. 
when I needed you right here at the church doing God's work. Oh, Reb, I got to do this. Oh, Reb, I got to do that. Oh, Reb, my mind is not in that right now. You know, this, this is what I tell all of you. <clears throat> I hope God doesn't do you like you do him. Every day is election day for each one of us. We are confronted with choices and decisions every minute of the day. And though they, they, they seem small and insignificant, let me tell y'all something. God takes the little things to try your heart. There was a pastor that went to speak at a jail. And when he got there, a friend he knew growing up saw him and asked the jail man, can I introduce him before he speaks today? Get the story. The prisoner introduced him and told about their past relationships. They had played together, gone to school together attended school together, went to Sunday school together. One of them had dropped out of Sunday school, left the things that he had been taught as a child. Well, the boy that dropped out was the one making the introduction at the prison that day. The other boy is the one standing before you right now preaching this message. We all have choices. It's how you make your choice. My mama used to say, it's your bed. You got to make it up and you got to sleep in it. Question is, how do you want your bed when you come home every night? We choose. We choose to tell a truth or we choose to tell a lie. We know that both are stamped on our souls. We choose to take a social drink or refuse it. Say amen. And, and, and who but God will know the outcome? Come on, y'all. We, we choose to discipline our lives or to follow the path that the world takes us down. We choose to hold a grudge or to forgive somebody freely. Come on, y'all. We choose to be selfish or generous, happy or sad. Choose. Choose this day whom you shall serve. Choices determine your destiny. Every day is election day. What choice have you made? Come on, stand to your feet, everybody. Election day. As we move into this point of our worship experience, it's time for somebody to choose. We offer three appeals.